Welcome everyone to another lesson on ergonomics and anthropometrics this time. Um, we're going to look at some practical examples of this really, really important topic um, for design technology students. Uh, it also links to many other topics um, that you may come across in life. Um, design is really important to me and I'm sure it's important to you. So uh, sit back and watch the slides with some of the activities you can also get involved in later on. So the first thing is that ergonomics definition, well ergonomics is really, really important. It says here, it's a study of people and their relationship with the environment around them. Well, what does that mean? That's really difficult to, to understand. So I'm going to take you through three examples of three computer mice and how one might be more ergonomically beneficial to, to the person working with them or the environment around them. So my first mouse you can see here is my original mouse in my office which you can see my hand position is quite helpful. It's got the buttons where my fingers are. It's got a slight scoop where my thumb is, but you can also see that the tension in my arm means that it is having to work at an angle. Um, as you can see there, it's sort of like quite unusual for your hand to be in that position. My second mouse, as you can see, it's got a nice sculptured thumbprint. It's more sculptured in this bit, and the finger bits are still quite useful in terms of being where they should be to press the buttons with the roller ball but again it's at that funny angle my latest mouse this one here is a bit different in the sense that you can see that it's sculptured so that it's holding itself on its side and the side angle is really important you can also see that my buttons are in the right way it's really sculptured for my thumb to sit in but the angle of my arm is much more comfortable for me to use for long periods of time so that my arm naturally doesn't sit next to me like this it actually should be sitting more like that so ergonomically it works better with me as a person and the relationship around me now anthropometrics you may have seen some of these pictures before it's all about ergonomics but it's about people's size and shapes you need to know the size of people's body parts to be able to design something that's effective. So I need to know if I'm making a handlebar grip, the size of people's grips to make it fit and work. If I'm making a mobile phone, I need to know the hand span, for example. And that goes through right to the top end of things, to spacecraft, aircraft, cars, all that sort of stuff. So ergonomics is linked to anthropometrics, but anthropometrics is about body sizes and shapes. This slide is about anthropometrics and the population. And it's got this funny curve, as you can see. It's called a bell curve, because it looks a bit like a bell, doesn't it? And we've got these different lines going up here, as you can see. So I'm going to start off in the middle. Now, this is the average size person, the 50% percentile. They call it a word called percentile, the middle, the average size. This section here has 5% of the population in it. It's called the fifth percentile. And as you can see, he would probably be in the fifth percentile, the 5% of the population that are smallest. Whereas Mr. Johnson might be in the fifth percent of the biggest percent of the population. So he'd be in the 95th percentile, Mr. Johnson, whereas Mr. Hart would be in the fifth percentile. Now, we'd hope that all those different people would be in this area here. And you might argue that actually I'm going to be designing product, a product to fit in Mr. Average or Miss Average. But that's not always the case. And on the next slide, we'll take you to explain what it means. So it depends on what you're designing. That's what it's after. And all these measurements are going to be used to show a percentile size for looking at arm reach, etc. Let's take you through the example on the next slide. So if I designed a door for the fifth percentile of people, I would be making a quite a small door. That would cause problems for everybody over the fifth percentile or the smallest 5% of the population. So a door is in fact designed for the 95th percentile so that everybody up to the 95th percentile can get through it fairly easy. Those people who are bigger are gonna have to dip their head and stoop a little bit. So really important that you use the right measurement for the right design. And that's really key when you come to designing. So when we come to look at the data, 
the anthropometric data, you'll often find images showing you which different measurements are used. And this one's called bottom knee length, from the bottom to the front of the knee. And as you can see, there's different categories. There's a male category and a female category. And in general, this is very generalistic in, in sets, but that actually males are larger than females in general. And then you've got your percentiles all coming all the way down here for women and all the way down here for men. So we have here the 50th percentile. And we've got a measurement in centimetres and inches here. We're going to use centimetres. So you can see the 50th, the average size from here to here in a female is 58.78 centimetres. Whereas in a male, the 50th percentile is in fact 61.54 millimetres. If we take the 95th percentile, you're going back to Mr. Johnson, and you can see that actually a female would be 63 centimetres and a male would be 66.74 centimetres, much bigger than that 50th percentile. And here you can see a load of tab tables with different sizes and measurements. And your school may have different uh, books for that or might have uh, different websites. But you can see the idea and principle is that different people are different sizes. So let's take you through some examples of design. That's what we're all here for, it's about designing. We're not here to measure people necessarily. We want to use that data, but we're gonna take you through some examples. So the first thing is, the top one, if I was imagining I was making a bike helmet or a motorcycle helmet, what would be the key measurement that I would need? Well, I would need to know the head circumference, which is the space around the top of the head, around the forehead. What percentile would I need? Well, I would need a range. And I would be designing something between the 5th percentile, the smallest, and the biggest percentile, the 95th. So I cover lots of users. I want the maximum amount of users to be able to fit that cycle helmet on so I can sell lots and lots to people. We also know that cycle helmets have an adjustment strap to allow that flexibility to twist at the back to make it bigger or smaller. So that's why I'd be making use of that judgment space there. If I was designing a seat in an airport, I'd be looking at thigh length because what I want to be able to design is I want to be able to sit on the seat from there to there. So it might be the bum to knee length again. I would be designing with the 95th percentile, the largest user, so everyone can sit on it. And that would show an example like that. And lastly, light switches. I'd want to measure people's height, I'm guessing. And I want to use the smallest fifth percentile because what I want to make sure is that small people can reach and touch that light switch by reaching up. And if I was larger, I could reach down and still use the function of the light switch. So on this slide, um, I've got you to think about looking at some data on a data table. And I would like you to think about the design issues around these different um, problems. And I've given one for an example, a PC monitor, what measurement you would use, actually find the sizes and you can choose to use a male or female or use both, you decide, and then justify why you're using it. So the next problem is you've got a Formula One car, which are really narrow cockpits and they want to reduce the weight as much as possible. What measurement would you need to use to fit someone in a very narrow cockpit? What size would you want? The next one, I want you to think about is the dashboard distance from your seat in a car to the dashboard so I can reach the dashboard. Think about what measurement and size you would need for that. The third one is about getting in a man down a manhole in the road to access a sewer. The widest part of my body, you need to think about which is the widest part of your body as you're thinking maybe as you get through a narrow gap. And then lastly, I want you to think about getting some rubber gloves for coronavirus. And I want you to get a medium sized glove. What would you do to make a medium sized glove? What measurement and sizes would you use? This is a challenge for you to find out some data yourselves now to go and do some experimenting, some investigation work. What I'd like you to do is to find some hand breadth, which is this size from the outside of your hand from one side, sorry, from one side to another. And I'd also like you to find hand span. So that's your hand spanned as far as you can from your thumb to your little fingers you can see here. And we're gonna ask you to find 
five different people, hopefully of the same um, age group-ish, so if you think about teenagers or five adults, and you can share data amongst your class or whatever you want to do. And I would like you to produce a little table of those two different measurements and make some comparisons about what you think is perhaps the average size and average um, measurements for hand breadth and hand span. See if you can do that challenge. And lastly, um, another extension task here is to make an ergonome. And ergonomes are really uh, fun things in the sense that they use to see how people move and work. And the idea is here you cut around this template, put onto thin card, you make some holes and use split pins or paper clips to join the body parts and then design something that fits this card that's comfortable. It could be a chair, a bench, an outside table and chair. You choose what you do, but come up with a model um, and design something or make it in card. You choose what you do, but that is your extension task. So hopefully you're now aware of the difference between ergonomics, which is about how people interact with their um, designs and products that they use, such as a, a computer mouse, such as this one, and anthropometrics, which is about body sizes and shapes and data. And most importantly, it's about you making great designs. Keep on going for design technology, um, come up with some great ideas, and we'll see you in the next session.